All right, hey guys, welcome to welcome back to the Go Get It podcast. Um, this episode is going to be episode 15. Wow, we're getting pretty far into these episodes. Um, so yeah, and today I have my good friend uh, Alex Duchere with me. Uh, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? What's up? I'm Alex Duchere. Uh, I did two podcasts, OG podcasts with yeah. Nasser, you know, back in the SoundCloud, you know, yeah. you know the vibes, you know yeah. the vibes. Yeah. Um, currently, I'm... Um, about five days out from shipping out to Navy boot camp. Um, Nasser wanted to have me on to discuss, you know, uh, how I mix my strength training with, you know, getting in better cardiovascular shape and things like that. So, uh, you know, that's that's my life right now, just training and trying to, you know, become a, you know, go, go into military and not be a civilian anymore, you know? I got you, I got so, you. That's and that. I- I really wanted to have Alex on here to talk about this topic because he's kind of maximized. He's maximized on both strength and cardiovascular shape um, at the same time. Like literally, he's been he's been training, uh, doing a bunch of cardio work, a bunch of calisthenic work, a lot of running, a lot of swimming, stuff like that. But he's also been getting stronger in the gym because um, I think I believe your most recent mile and a half time was what was it? My most recent? Yeah, it yeah. was a nine. Like your, your best nine thirty. Recent. Yeah. Oh, my best one ever is a nine fourteen. My best recent one was a nine thirty four. Yeah, and you're you're two twenty right now. Yeah, I'm two twenty. Like that's a lot. It's pre- that's it's pretty. pretty it's pretty. It's very rough on my body. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish I, I wish I was a little lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, I um I'm working on it. it takes time. Yeah, yeah. You know? I got you. I got you. But yeah. the impressive thing is, you've also been able to get stronger on your lifts because I saw that you hit a recent bench PR and you hit 280 for six or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I did do that. That was, uh, that was a few, I want to say almost two months ago now I did 280 for six. Mm -hmm. Um, then I ended up doing 290 for five. Holy crap. (laughs) Like a few weeks after that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my bench like strength just went through the roof. I think it's all the push ups I have to do. Mm -hmm for the navy Mm -hmm. um and all the pull-ups i've been doing you know like i really learned how to do a real pull-up not what a lot of people do is like they don't get the full extension the full contraction i'm i my chest hits the bar every time i do a pull-up you know it's i really get a good contraction in my back so i think the extra back strength and all the volume on push-ups i've been doing has you know helped me immensely with the bench you know Mm -hmm. so uh yeah I did that. I uh, recently, right when the gyms opened back up, I've been training all quarantine. I had a private gym I was going to, but it was limited stuff. I haven't trained legs since uh, March at this point. My first leg day back in the gym, I hit a 405 parallel box squat for six. Easy. I had like, I had 12 in me, but you know, I had other things going on. I can't be killing myself to the point where I can't walk. So I didn't do the 12. Um, the next week I did a 425, no spot, same box for about four. I probably had about eight in me. You know, I probably had double on both of those. So, uh, yeah, I, that's, the, that's the strongest I've ever been squatting in terms of repetition. Mm-hmm. Um, repetition doesn't always translate to, you know, they go, you're one rep max, but it's a pretty good indicator that I got stronger without – you know, able to train those movements. And that's probably because of the swimming and even the running, maybe, you know, I was able to do those things and keep my legs really active. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's going to kind of guide me to my first question, which has a pretty simple explanation because you just kind of explained that you've been getting stronger and you're getting faster and, you know, you're getting in better cardiovascular shape overall. So is strength is gaining strength and, gaining cardiovascular endurance um possible to do even when you intermix them and do them uh let's say like throughout the same week it's throughout the same training week you know what i'm saying yeah no it's uh it's 100 percent possible uh they're both important aspects of life mm-hmm. being strong is always a good thing uh you know it'll help you with daily activities you know lifting up a box you know moving the couch you know, doing it, doing the yard work, you know, possibly whatever work you have to do, construction or something, keep you safer, you know, uh, limit injury and, uh, you know, keeping yourself in good cardiovascular shape. It's a, 
it's important. Your heart's the most important muscle in your body. You got to, you got to train it and make sure, you know, it can handle what you're putting it through, mm -hmm. you know? 100%. So can you break down for me a little bit more specifically how you were able to ma not only maintain, but gain strength as you were doing all these workouts for the Navy at the same time? Like, how did you balance? Repeat that again. You, you broke up. How did, what was your, what did your training look like when you started, when, because you were gaining strength, literally gaining yeah. and getting in better cardiovascular shape. So what was like your training split kind of looking like? Because you added, you had to add on the extra training from the Navy and you had to maintain your strength with the weight. So like, I'm just wondering, how did you even okay. manage that, balance that or, uh, you yeah. Know. So, um, I was actually start at the beginning of quarantine because that's when I started the training with the Navy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on Monday and Wednesdays, I actually went to Eisenhower park and trained with other, uh, recruits that are going to, into the Navy. Um, and we would do pool workouts first thing in the morning, uh, zero nine hundred. We do an hour pool workouts, hop out and jump out, go outside within ten minutes and do an outdoor workout. You know, calisthenics and things, running. Um, we did. We did a lot of push ups, a lot of sit ups, a lot of burpees mixed in with running we do rounds of that things like that almost like a crossfit workout without weights mm -hmm. um and then i would just carry on i'd go and do my regular training in the gym like i always did um was i a little tired yeah i was tired but it didn't really inhibit my performance too much because it wasn't like i was running a marathon before i was doing things that will overall make you in better shape and stronger for the gym. So it actually was almost like a pre-workout. Like it was like, it was like a warm up kind of, even though it was intense, it wasn't anything that completely destroyed me. So I also ate really good nutrition wise. So I made sure I recovered, get my glycogen storage back, you know, things like that. It's hard to do in one day, but it's possible depending on what you eat. And, uh, you know, I went about my training. I would do, chest and back training on Monday and on Wednesday I did shoulders and biceps and legs on Tuesday then usually when I didn't usually in between my Navy training on Tuesday I would swim so I'd probably swim right before my leg day I'd probably go for like an hour hop out shower and then head to the gym and then I would train legs so that's like almost a, another warm-up in itself you know I just did an, an hour swimming my legs are nice and warm my hips are loose my, uh, you know, my shoulders are loose, things like that. So it's good. Um, it didn't really affect my squat or anything whatsoever, my deadlift. Then uh, usually I would run also the nights, Monday and Wednesday, I would run those nights again. Took running off on Tuesday. Would do swimming Thursday, light run Friday, and a heavy and a hard swim Friday. And, uh, you know, Thursday I also did chest and back. So swimming with chest and back and uh, then light run and hard swimming with legs again on Friday. I mean, yeah, Friday. And so do you think weekend, oh, sorry. I took it a little, yeah, weekends I took it a little easier. Uh, you know, pretty much went light on everything and then just started a week back up again. And do you think that swimming, so you, you're saying swimming actually kind of helped you get warmed up for your workouts? Because a lot of people are like, oh, like, yeah. we can get stronger doing swimming and running and all this stuff, um, you know, like to combine. But you manage it to, you manage to fit that into your routine is like almost like a warm up for your whole body, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, anybody that swims will know that like you do, you jump in the pool and you do 20 laps in a row, no rest. Your, your core is pretty much, you know, a little on fire. It can be. That's how I am, at least my core hurts my hip flexors are really warm from all the kicking you know my knees are good because you know they're all warmed up and all the joints and everything have been moving for possibly like a half an hour to an hour depending on how long it takes you um yeah your arms are usually nice and warmed up you got the back pump because you're pulling all the movement your back pumps up uh swim yeah dude swimming is an awesome exercise i've that's I swam my first day back to squats after quarantine and that's where I hit the four or five for six easy. 
and I just swam an hour before that. And remember, I haven't had legs since March. So um, I felt really good and really warm, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I think if you were to do any form of cardio before a workout, it would probably, the best one would probably be swimming because it's just the full body, my, you know, doesn't really put any stress on your joints whatsoever. You know, uh, the cold water, usually the pool is cold water, which is like, you know, cold water, subjecting yourself to cold water is, can be extremely beneficial for you uh, for recovery purposes and blood flow purposes. Because you jump into cold water and you get out and it's not cold anymore, all your blood vessels and everything expand and dilate. So you get a huge amount of blood flow, which is really good for you too. So, uh, yeah, swimming is amazing. If you compare swimming, to let's say other forms of cardio like uh like high a little bit higher impact on like the knees and stuff like that like running um like yeah. is swimming your probably preferred type of cardio and is that the cardio that you would probably recommend to someone if they wanted to start adding more cardio into their routine yes like i would i would because in my opinion um it requires a lot more effort in certain ways and i'll explain what i mean running is definitely harder mentally i'm not a runner bro I hate it. Um, but it's definitely harder mentally to push on and on and say, all right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. It's definitely harder. Um, can I do, I think you can probably burn the same amount of calories and get this and get the same amount of benefit to like your cardiovascular health from swimming and to running. Yeah. I think it's pretty similar. I think swimming has the upper hand and the aspect that excuse me, you need to control your breathing. And you do it with as running as well. But with the swimming, if you don't control your breathing, you're going to swallow water. Then you're going to gag and things like that. So it's a very, you learn how to pace your breathing and how to have a nice, like, you know, synchronization with your stroke. You have, you, you have to really control it. You have to make sure that you inhale, you go underwater, breathe out, breathe out underwater, take the breath, go back. Um, I think that teaches a good cadence with your body alert tissue you control and it's also like i said it's less stress in your body probably burn around the same amount of calories if not more um it's more full body because you're literally using pretty much every muscle compared to running as you're just moving your legs you're pumping the arms a little bit i get a tweak in my neck almost every other week when i run i turn my head or something and you know that never happens in swimming. And I've your never, knees are fucking killing you and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like my knee, my knees suck. Like my lower back. I'm a heavy guy, so the lower back hurts. You know, you you step wrong one way, you land on your heel instead of like the ball of your foot. Next thing you know, like your legs a little fucked up. You know, it's uh, you can have shitty form and swim, and really not have an issue. You can have shitty form and do a few miles of running a week and have terrible issues so yeah i was telling you about i was telling you about that issue that i was having with my hip um i'm pretty yeah. sure because my running form is a little bit off and like mm -hmm. i don't i only ran like about three times a week so i was like oh like that's it, that's definitely like why this is happening because i just added that into the routine but yeah you're right like you make one the form for it can just go so many different ways and it yeah. has more, more consequences as opposed to having bad form for swimming absolutely and you also from your ankle injury, mm -hmm. I I don't remember, I don't recall, but I believe you said that one leg is a little longer than the other, right? Um, honestly, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's very possible, though. It's very very. Possible. I, I I I thought I remember you saying that back in the day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's very possible, and that could be something too. Your hips could be a little shifted, mm -hmm. putting you know, putting tension in different places, and you know, not evenly balanced out. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I were to say, the, the more optimal one to do. Is, is probably swimming, you know, you know, save yourself in the long run because runners at the end of the day, 20 years down the line, they're, they need hip replacements, things like that. Their knees are shot. It's just, it's so much wear and tear for, you know, minimal ben benefits in terms of like cardiovascular compared to some other things. And yeah, it's mentally tough, but mm -hmm. you can do a lot of mentally tough things like go lunge half a mile to a mile. See how mentally tough you are, you know? Yeah.
Yeah, I remember when we used to go hard in the fucking lunging, like 10 minutes yeah. after every workout, something like that. Shit, that actually gets you shredded. That's a whole other form of cardio that, like, I haven't touched in a while. But, like, I remember I would warm yeah. up with lunges. I would end my workouts with lunges. I would add lunges in my workout. That's actually a very, like, underestimated form of cardio in its own. You want to go more in depth in the uh, – because you yeah. love fucking lunging. I know you love lunging. Yeah, dude, I, I probably lunged over 100 miles, mm -hmm. and, like, back in, like, 2017. Um, yeah, so, like, that was my cart. You were shredded. I was shredded, yeah. I was, like, 6%, maybe, 5%. Yeah. 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 For a natural, that's pretty lean, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I was flat as a pancake, though, you know? Uh, yeah, but lunging's fucking really good because one of the benefits of lunging is that you strengthen all the tendons and ligaments in your knee. Uh, you're doing extremely high repetition to the muscles, so you're building muscular endurance. Um overall health because that high repetition is re it, that's where you get repair and growth and shit like that and if you have weak tendons and then you're lifting a heavy load like if you're squatting 600 but you have a tendon that can only hold 400 it's going to snap one day and that's where you tear the quad you tear the hamstring things like that so doing re extremely high repetitions is what strengthens that because tendons do not have as much blood flow as muscles and you know you know that mm -hmm. To get blood in a tendon, it's like you need 50 to 100 reps. You got to really pump blood in there. Um, so it's beneficial for that. Um, it's extremely good cardio. I, anybody listening to this, I guarantee you go put a timer on for two minutes and you go lunge continuously, no steps in between, and not like jerking around. Don't fucking stand there with your dick in your hand. Like take a fucking step every single time you get up, you take the next step, take the next step. I can guarantee you guys will be gassed. Your legs are going to burn. You're going to be sweating your ass off. Yeah, I am. Every time. I'm, like, dripping sweat. Do that for 10 minutes. You know? 10 minutes. Three times a week. That, and then go more, maybe. You know? I only needed 10 minutes because I was really fast. I did a quarter mile. I did a quarter mile. I did a lap around the track in eight minutes and 10 seconds. It was, like, my fastest one. That's really fucking fast. So, like, 10 minutes. Think about it. Even if I'm not pushing myself balls to the wall, I'm probably doing more than a quarter mile. That's a lot of fucking lunging, bro. Mm -hmm. So and I did that five, six days a week. Um, you know, that's that's healthy for your knees and not gonna hurt your knees. Uh as long as you lunge right, you know, it's gonna make you sweat and burn a lot of calories, boost your metabolism. Uh re you know, really good for your heart because you're gonna be huffing and puffing. And uh I'd say that's like one of the best low impact you know, high intensity ways of doing cardio. It's going to take long, 10, 15 minutes, even, even eight minutes or start at five minutes, three times a week. I guarantee you'll see a difference, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember when I was doing, when I was doing, because you showed, you put me onto the lunging, like you put me onto that. So I started doing that too. And yeah. uh, I realized at the time that was one of the, that was probably not the leanest I've ever been, but it was definitely like close to the leanest I've ever been because I was doing them pretty lean. every time I went to the gym and I was still eating yeah. 3000 calories a day, but looking like that shredded. So I was just like, you know, like, yeah. it works. This shit works. Yeah, dude. I was, eat I was, when I was the leanest I was, I was eating probably f almost a thousand calories more than when I was 10 to 15 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was eating. I was eating like a motherfucker, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. I was that. spending. I was every Saturday, in like 2017, 2018, I went to IHOP every Saturday, and bought about seventy dollars worth of food just for me. I would go every Saturday, and they knew me. They were like the pancake boy. They knew my order every time I went. Seventy dollars of IHOP just for me, and I ate it all right there. Nobody does that, dude. I was 170 pounds, eating like. 3,500 calories in like an hour at IHOP. And then I go home and probably eat more. And I was losing weight. And part that's of how, that's how badass lunches are. Mm -hmm. exactly. What were you saying? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm done. That's it. Oh, okay, you're done. Um, so, yeah, I, that's what uh, I kind of wanted to hone into next. So, how should someone approach now their diet, now that they're adding, you know, an additional form of cardio, whether it's running, swimming? um lunging like how should they now look at their diet um just to you know 
like how would you how would you go about it because now you're adding higher impact stuff uh now you're expanding yeah okay stuff. yeah yeah so um maybe if you guys have listened to our previous podcast you'll know that i am not the biggest carb eater um i'm not that you need carbs you need your vegetables you need your carbs i just eat less than most people i don't i gain a lot of weight when i eat carbs no matter what it's just i i can eat a lot of fat a lot of protein i won't gain weight i put carbs in i i gain weight and you know it gets out of control um but i needed to add carbs more and more the more i did this training i needed that little easier to i need that energy a little bit easier to break down and use you know, instead of a fat, it's going to take a long time, you know, and I needed something quick. Um, so I ate a lot of white rice, uh, which I love white rice. Um, I actually would get about an, an acai bowl or eat a lot of fruit in the day just because, uh, to fight the inflammation from doing all the running and, uh, whatever was acting up on me, which helped a lot. And that's also some quick sugar, you know, to get right after your workout, you know, which can be very beneficial right after a workout. Um, yeah, I would say the biggest thing is if you're trying to do something where you're trying to train to get as strong as possible and also get in as best cardiovascular shape as possible, definitely make sure you're getting your carbs in. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. It's like it makes sure you're eating a little more – make sure you're eating like you're trying to bulk because you're probably not going to bulk because you're doing so much to burn so many calories. You're not going to gain weight really. Um, make sure you get your carbs in and you refill that glycogen storage. Cause it, if you don't, you're going to notice a big decline in performance. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that, no, go. Okay. Okay. I was just saying, um, so like, Oh man, I lost my train of thought now. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but we so were talking about, I, was, I think I was just going to say though, that like, um, you should, you don't like, yeah, yeah. Make sure you're getting in your carbs. But in general, I would say you probably have to increase your caloric intake in general because yeah. you're going to yeah. be spending more energy overall. You know what I'm saying? Like you, Absolutely. Have to, yeah, yeah. like you have to eat more now, um, because you're adding on all this, you know, all the Navy training on top of your weight training. So you probably yeah. are eating more now than you were just doing your weight training. Well, let's put it this way the main thing is to inc increase the caloric intake, but try to do that with the carbs. Mm -hmm. So that's like the biggest thing you're going to change. Like my fats were pretty much good. My protein was pretty much good. All I needed really, I needed more calories and I really needed more carbs. So all I did was add in the extra 500,000 calories with carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. I, was eating, I was eating a lot. I was eating a lot of carbs. Like I was eating two, three cups of rice a meal. And I wasn't really gaining weight until the quarantine hit. Then, you know, I couldn't do the full gym like I was and things like that. A few things changed. I wasn't, I was only weight training two to three times a week compared to seven. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Calories in is definitely the most important, especially, if the, you know, and always make sure they're good calories that agree with your body. If it's something that causes inflammation in your gut and makes you bloat and things like that, I would recommend taking that food, writing it down in the book, and keeping note. When I eat this, it makes me feel bloated. It makes my stomach a little upset, you know, because you're probably not digesting it good. And then there's no point of eating it because it's just going to waste. You want to have something that your body's going to agree with, break down easily, and be able to use, you know, otherwise you're just fucking up your whole digestion, you know, for everything else that you do agree with. So, uh, Find a find something you agree with, eat it, and make sure you're getting in those extra calories, preferably from carbs, to get that quick energy and refill the glycogen that you're going to be using up. And yeah, so like you said, you have to make sure that the calories you're getting in are quality calories, not just fucking bullshit. Yeah. Because like you said, you want stuff that's actually going to agree with your stomach, and so you can go and train and perform optimally, so you can get stronger and in more yeah the best of shape. Um, yeah. So, Speaking of getting stronger, so can I? Can you explain a little bit in depth how you managed to increase your bench so much? Um, because now you kind of, you you reduce the amount of days that you were weight training, right? Yeah, 
to make to yeah. so you can so you can add on the, all this navy cardiovascular training right yeah that that was only really the only reason the the only reason the weight training was reduced was the gyms closed and i didn't i went to a private gym but i didn't have access every day i went when i could go and then i also worked out at my buddy's house and at my house mm -hmm. but i have such limited stuff that I wouldn't be able to train full body throughout the week. I'd only be able to really all I had access to was being able to bench and uh, doing back and shoulders and things like that. So it would be counterintuitive really to be doing that every single day. Mm -hmm. So I had to break it up. You know, I had to say, all right, work out two to three times a week. And, you know, this way I'm not, doing too much i'm not benching every fucking day you know that's there's people that do that it's fucking stupid mm -hmm. you know um don't so don't how, bench every day mm -hmm. yeah that's i would it. yeah, yeah definitely just, there's no reason to bench every day unless you're like going for like a you're like julius max something like that you're going for like a 800 pound PR. even then he don't bench every day you know mm -hmm. he does other shit mm -hmm. exactly um, but I was wondering, so what, what were like your rep ranges looking like for bench and stuff like that? And your squats, like, because now you had to reduce the amount of days you were going. So how did you compensate for that on the days that you were training? So, uh, started off with a five by five, did about six weeks with that. Um, from the five by five, we went on to do about one back movement, something to like a top set. So we'd work up into heavy weight try to get like five to eight reps and then uh we do a tricep movement and some rear delts maybe and uh after the six weeks you know uh, i went to a five by three and i did that for like another six weeks probably this is towards like the end of quarantine i didn't really have like a i didn't really have anything planned out earlier on i was all thrown off and i you know was bitching and moaning about our situation um so I did about a, I did a five by three and the same thing. I'd hammer back right after, um, I'd hammer triceps. I would do a chest accessory when needed. So maybe I would do some like, uh, heavy dumbbells or some flies or weighted pushups or dips. We did a lot of dips good for the triceps and chest and shoulders. Um, and I did, we did that probably twice a week. Yeah, it was separated by, like, it was different every week, depending on our schedule. So, like, one week would be, like, Monday and Friday we'd bench. And then, like, next week it would be, like, Tuesday and Saturday or something like that. And, you know, it'd switch. Um, and in between that, we would usually hit some shoulders, you know, try to get those delts popping, which we did. We, Me and my buddy put on some pretty good caps on our shoulders, mm -hmm. a lot of laterals. Uh, we, we do pressing overhead, which is really good for your bench, really good. But uh, we don't really focus that, on that too much because I'm like a, I'm a powerlifter bodybuilder. I fucking love lifting heavy, but I, lo I, I love bodybuilding more. So uh, pressing doesn't really build my delts like that. It, build, it gets me strong. It just doesn't – I don't build size like that laterals is what do it raises so that's what we focus on um and what were the references yeah. looking like for that like 15 20 Later, for laterals yeah yeah um i would usually do a warm-up i started my shoulder that I usually i take about 10 pound dumbbells i do 100 laterals straight um then i would go into my presses i would do probably like a a 20 15 12 uh, then go up to like an eight and then drop, do drop sets, probably do, hit like three different weights at the drop set. So I would aim for about eight to 12 in the drop sets. So I do the heavy set of eight and try to get eight to 12. Didn't really happen. You know, I was burnt out at that point. Mm -hmm. Laterals I was doing. I, I always start with the 15s. Usually I do 30 and we worked up to, I worked up to the 45s from the 15s. So a lot of volume, probably went like 30, 25, 20, probably hit 20 again and like 18, 15, you know, uh, all the way down to like 12, really good squeeze, hard contraction, try to pause as long as I can on the top, um, no swinging, 
not like not just dropping my arm like it comes down slow um and then i would probably drop from there so i'd work up to the 45 and then probably drop down so it's a shit ton of volume mm -hmm. and i like you know? how you structured the first you said so the first six weeks you were doing a five by five yeah yeah and honestly yeah. like if if anyone is like interested in strength training in general or just like getting into training doing the five by five is such a great training model to go by, especially when you're first starting, because even me and Alex, we still go back to the five by five. He literally just said that like how he got yeah. stronger was following the five by five. Then you reduce the amount of reps, but you increase the, I'm sure you increase the, the weight, the weight. As, as yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, cause, uh, believe it or not, my, uh, my two, what did I say? I did two nine. Was it two ninety? I think I did it for four or five. Like I, I, think I, I, five. I think you said five. Yeah, five. Mm -hmm. it, that was a that was a nine by three. That was a five by three day. So I'm like, usually on the last set, I would push to what I, my mat. Like I would push to my limit. So, you know, usually when you do a five by five, you're not taking a weight that you can't get the fifth rep. You know, you 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 want to hit all the reps. That's kind of the point. Mm -hmm. Um. You fail sometimes, you know, everybody has an off day, this or that. But every single day, I did a five by five or five by three. My last set, I would try to get one more if I could, or two more. Or like when I hit the when I hit the one eight, the two eighty for six, that was a five by five day. You know, I hit it for six. So uh, that that's probably the best way to do it, honestly, especially as a beginner. Like you build mass. Um, it's not too heavy where you're going to like fuck up your form and it's heavy enough that you're going to get a good benefit out of it. You're going to get stronger, but also it's an, it's a good amount of repetitions to 25 repetitions. So you can, uh, it, te it, it allows you to build movement patterns with the, with the slightly heavier weight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I always get, I always get this one question where it's like, should you, increase the weight every single like let's say you have a five by five should you increase the weight every single set or should you keep it the same personally i usually tell my clients to keep it the same so then next week they that's can cool. go and then increase it every every week you know what i'm saying but sometimes that's what uh, we did some people yeah mm -hmm. yeah but sometimes you, what no because i feel like sometimes people get the five by five and they increase the weight every single set but i'm like no nah, no nah, yeah. if i wanted you to do that you would have a top set yeah, I've done that, but it's not really like a traditional five by five, you know. Exactly. Um, the whole point of the five by five is to, you know, hit that weight for five sets of five. Um, that's that's probably the best way to do it because then the next week, you could add on, like a two and a half or something. Can you turn that on? My dad just turned the light off on me. You're good. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, so the, that's probably the best way to do it because then you can add up a little bit weight the next week, or you could do something like slow down the negative, do it a little more controlled reps, and that's also going to build. You know, that's also another way of increasing volume and increasing workload. You know, maybe adding one more second on the negative. That's a lot more time under tension, so that will uh, you know, so you don't always have to do. Mm -hmm. the, the traditional let me add weight yeah oh, yeah weight. you know but yeah definitely it's a it, you keep the same weight five by five mm -hmm. yeah and, and then like you said it does, it's not all about the weight like you can increase strength in other ways like you said you can slow down the rep you can uh yeah increase the rest time you can it, there's just a bunch of other ways to progress other than just building yeah. the weight i mean like to exactly but if you're doing, I'll have to say this, mm -hmm. doing slower reps, it's definitely going to translate more to building size than strength, but it will build you strength. But to a certain extent, if you're doing like, a, if you're doing like a long negative, it really doesn't translate as much as people think. They think they're doing a five second negative and that's going to tra translate to strength. It doesn't translate as much as it will to actually building size but it is another way to add time under tension and it is another way to get stronger, but there are better ways to get stronger, like adding, uh, adding weight or adding repetitions. I did say that's a little better. Mm -hmm. And would you say, you know, that, but it's, it's, but it's still another way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And would you Go. say that because I remember you you um you kind of put me onto it, and um I don't know if you still do it, but you did a lot of speed work, and that you were yeah. also getting very strong off that, and I also started get, getting getting very strong off that. So you think speed work is yep. more applicable to strength as opposed to bodybuilding type stuff? One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well. You know, uh, you know, I follow max effort and dynamic, which is speed work. I'm a huge con- conjugate method lifter. Um, I'm gonna give a short explanation of what con- what uh, max effort is. Max effort work is lifting a maximal weight ninety percent and above on that given day. So, um, and the point of that is to strain. It's max effort day is not the day you get stronger it's the day you learn to strain through a maximal weight a maximal load teach your body how to strain how to handle the load uh get your cns adapted to a heavier load um speed day is where you actually build like a decent amount of strength because the whole whole point of speed day can you hear me? Sorry, yeah, someone yeah, called me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. The whole, the whole point of speed day is to move the weight with the maximal amount of fibers you can recruit. So um, if you're not recruiting those all those fibers and you're not training speed, you're never going to be have your full potential to lift because you're not – there's so much that you're not using and recruiting. Um, It teaches you how to accelerate the bar faster, which what's – uh. What is the formula for force? Force equals mass times acceleration. You can't cr- create more force to move weight if you don't accelerate faster. The mass is irrelevant because, like, this is mass. This pencil, this pencil is mass. But if I can move, if you can't, if I can't move the pencil that fast, it's I'm not creating as much force as I possibly can. You you need to you need to train the acceleration aspect of it. You need to train, you you have to train both sides. And once you do that, like you'll see a huge difference. Like it's like the mass is irrelevant really when it comes to actually creating force, you know, Mm -hmm. you you need to learn how to accelerate fat pretty much faster than gravity, faster than the weights pushed down. You need to push it faster up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the simple, I'm that's like, without me diving really deep into it, because we're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like the, the way I'm trying to dumb it down. It just, you, it's like you got to train both sides of the spectrum. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So what would be like a good rep? Because there's a, obviously you can go, you can go a bunch of different directions with uh, speed work and stuff like that. But let's say someone is now listening to this and they're like, oh, and maybe I'll add some speed work into it. Maybe they'll start doing speed work for bench. Um, what would, how would the rep schemes differ? Because we just talked about five by five. That's how you're going to build your strength. Now we're talking speed work. So what do yeah. they do for the speed work if they have one day five by five on bench? Uh, and they want to add another day for speed. What would okay. You- yeah. So it, you would, the best thing to do is probably like a nine by three. Uh, what I do on a nine by three is I take my weakest grip, which is out wide. And I do uh, three sets there as fast as I possibly can. I use about 75% of my max, uh, depending if I have bands, it, that changes. Um, I use it around you want to use around 50 to 75 percent of your one rep max uh you want to try to do each set really quick and no more than about 30 45 second rest after the three sets there you move the grip a little closer do another three sets same rest time uh, same concept move as fast as possible after that you move the grip to like a close grip bench three sets fast as possible that's typical speed day. You can do 12 sets as well, but nine sets is the most typical one, nine by three, three different grips. You know, always start with the weakest because you're going to be, if you start, if you finish with the weakest, you're probably going to be moving too slow. So you want to always try to move at an extremely fast rate. Um, speed day is usually the high volume day too. So max effort day, usually it's a little lower volume, higher and like really high intensity uh speed day you up the volume try to get the repetition in there you know that's maybe upwards towards 
12, 15, 20 reps, you know, on all your accessories, things like that, mm -hmm. you know. And um, people are probably hearing like, oh, nine sets, what the fuck? Well, the whole point is you want to go through these pretty, you want to go through these pretty quickly, though. That's the whole point of the speed work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. me, and, me and my buddy did uh, our fastest nine sets, which is about seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm at a, I'm much stronger than the guy I works out, the guys I work out with. So, um, it's like, a, we got to change weights every time. So, when I say, like, I jump on the bench, I jump on, I get set, I unrack, I hit the three reps in probably under three seconds. Mm -hmm. Rack it, I jump right up, we take the plate off, we put, like, something else on, he jumps on, he, he's on there on the bench for at most 10 seconds, gets set, unracks it, hits it as fast as possible, about three seconds, racks it, and then I jump right back on the bench. You know, it's very, we don't, little uh, rest time. very little rest time. Very, yeah, very little rest time. Like, there's been days where we only did 20 second rest. You know, like, you can go up, depending on how big your crew is, the, the most optimal rest time is probably about 30, 45 seconds. Um, but if you can recover fast enough to do it in 20 seconds, then you should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you should be. Mm -hmm. Now, we have talked a lot about gaining strength in the gym and you you've been adding all this cardio because of all the navy training so i'm i feel like a good question would be is it optimal to do both at the same time or is it better to do them separately what are you your thoughts um in the end uh there are two different things two different sports mm -hmm. um you know you're gonna probably be better off doing them separately depending on how much of each you're doing if you're training to run a marathon you're not gonna and you're, you're you're wasting a lot of potential you could make in the weight room you know um if you're training to you know anything like long like the cathlon you know the you know you're it's gonna affect your weight training for sure if you're going and doing a half an hour of light swimming and a mile or two of running a day, it's not going to hurt you too much. You know, you run a mile or two every other day or three times a week. That won't affect you too much. But if, you're, if your goal is to, like, compete in both, you're going to lose potential on both aspects. You're not going to be recovered enough to go run your marathon and you're not going to be recovered enough to squat your 800 pounds after running your marathon. If that's what your goal is, you know? Um, so no, it's not really optimal, but it can be done. Uh, With balance. You just, yeah, you got to balance it out. That's it. You know, if you find the right balance, you'll find you can, you know, make, you can increase both sides of the spectrum really well you can get really strong and you can get in really good shape you know um there's a lot of other ways to get in shape besides doing like the tr traditional cardio mm -hmm. um me and Asa were talking just before the podcast like i'm a big advocate in dragging sleds i think that builds immense cardio like really good um but that also conditions the muscle and can strengthen the muscle so that's something you do at the same time lunges um that is great cardio and your get your legs get strong really strong so uh there's things you can do um but in the end i try to say people people you look at a sprinter they sprint 100 meters and a lot of them are jacked you look at the marathon runner and they're running 15 miles a week 20 miles a week maybe more and they're they look like they never ate in their life and i'm not like judging them but they're usually really skinny and what i t try to tell people is that if your goal is to get strong and big you want to do the least amount of uh low intensity cardio because if you're running for two hours or an hour you're teaching your body that like i need to be able to run and what can i do to optimize my running what can i do to make it easier on myself and when you're carrying 
uh, 11% body fat, you're 200 pounds, 11% body fat, and you're 100, you know, like 80 pounds of muscle, your body's going to be like, why am I carrying this muscle? Because all of this muscle is the heaviest, it's heavy. Why am I carrying this muscle? I'm trying to run this marathon. And you will get smaller. I can guarantee it. Your body will get smaller because you, it's trying to be smart. Your body's a machine. It's the only computer that we don't 100% understand yet. You know, we can make all these computers. You're on a computer, I'm on my iPhone. It can do everything. And we still don't understand our bodies 100% yet. So um, it's, it's trying to optimize everything it does. So uh, if you want to get strong, I don't recommend running a marathon. If you want to run a marathon, I don't recommend trying to squat 800 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help your goal. It's all about it's all about what exactly is your goal at the moment. You know yeah. And but yeah. I feel like if someone is just looking to you know add a little bit more cardio into the routine, like you said, like there's no problem you know going for a half hour swim or you know running a no. like a mile here and there, something like that, a few times a week. But overall, like you shouldn't be overloading too much cardio into your routine if your if your ultimate goal is to get stronger and bigger and stuff like that no yeah mm -hmm. definitely not definitely not i mean but you, we can look at some of these crossfit athletes these top tier mm -hmm. crossfit athletes man mm -hmm. some of them are i mean strong is strong is a gray area what what one consider what one might consider strong another might consider weak um these crossfit area uh athletes are they're strong they can front squat 400 pounds most of them the top tier ones they can overhead press 315 325 that's strong compared you know compared to the average person compared to the strength athlete that's nothing um but those guys are in killer shape you go do 25 clean and jerks in a row with fucking 225 that's some fucking cardio right there, man. They'll run, and that's, then they'll run like a mile, and then they go, and then they go run a mile to the next event they do or something. Like it's a, you know. So if your goal is CrossFit, those guys found the right mix. They found that that comfortable area of adding cardio in with weightlifting, and a lot of the weightlifting they do it just happens to be, you know, it, it, extremely cardio oriented, like, you know snatches and things like that you know rope climbing you know uh they're you know all all the resistance shit they do the aerodyne bikes and shit that can build strength but that's like it's a good mixture you know so those that's like a, you know that's like your goal that's kind of like how i need to be right now i'm a little too much with the weights i would say i too uh strength oriented but if i could transition more to like a crossfit athlete that'd probably be really good for my training mm -hmm. but the thing is you really enjoy weight training though i and love it too okay, much yeah, yeah yeah exactly and it's okay to for anyone like listening to this it's okay to keep a certain exercise in that you really like or a form of exercise that you really like if, like if you like to go play tennis keep that in your routine don't don't make it seem like oh like you know i'm trying to get bigger and stronger like i have to cut it i have to cut this out now no make yeah. it work find a good balance that you can maintain yeah, and that's another thing, too. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. Fuck traditional cardio. Go play tennis. Mm -hmm. Go play basketball. You know, play sports like that. Because, dude, I get it's a fucking workout when I go to play basketball. I haven't done it in years. I, I can't risk rolling my ankle or something like that with my career ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Um, But... Dude, go play basketball for an hour with your friends, two hours with your friends. You know, you're probably run, you're running a lot. You're jumping. You're getting a little physical. You're pushing. You know, that's good cardio. Mm -hmm. and what's you know, your, you don't have to do basic shit. No, 100% I agree with that. Like, people, people are like, oh, like, I probably have to go, like, run or something like that. I mean, I mean, like, if there's something that you really enjoy doing, like, I got a bunch of clients who just tell me, like, hey, um, listen, like, I'm going to go play basketball or whatever. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's completely fine. Like go, that's still burning calories. It's still doing a form of cardio because maybe they'll have running that day or something like that. But they're like, Oh, I just played basketball for like two hours. I'm like, all right, I already know you burned enough calories. Yeah. Probably more than yeah. enough of anything. So, yeah. Um, so what do you think about hit workouts? What's your, what's your thoughts on like hit, hit workouts? Because it's kind of very, very similar to CrossFit, 
But um, like, what do you think? It, how do you think it translates to strength training? Now, let me ask you, like, hit as in, like, the hit with the weights or hit, like, as in, like, car cardio-oriented? I mean, more so, like, the idea of it, like, the whole, like, circuit training way that – the kind of what we were talking about with the CrossFit, okay. the whole idea of, like, I, training with circuits like that for uh, cardio. Okay, so, like, I, I've actually trained that before. Um, mm -hmm. I used to go to this gym called Gridiron, uh, you know, when I – I remember that. Mm -hmm. Played yeah. football. When I played football – um, and they did, that's what they did. High intensity interval training. It would be like four or five exercises, a lot of machines with very heavy resistance, not like the typical gym machine with a cable. Like it's, it's designed to create more resistance. It's, and we would do like one or two warm up sets. And then the final set would be like balls to the wall. I'd fail at rep 20 and I ended up doing 50. Like, that's literally it would just be forced reps and we did like five or six exercises and that will get you really strong but something you will notice with that especially as a natural athlete you will wear out quick you will wear out really quick mm -hmm. if you do that constantly um i do like the idea of it i just don't think it's something that should that could be done constantly especially as a natural athlete when you put drugs in the game it's a, it's a big difference um i don't think it can be done day in and day out uh as a natural athlete over a long period of time i think it'll wear, wear you out and you'd be better cycling in and out of that training and using other methodologies of training you know and you know together i think that that would be more beneficial I do, I do love hit training though. It tests you mentally, physically, and uh, it, you can get very strong from it. It just, you get strong from it for six months and then the seventh month you do it. And then next thing you know, you're back to lifting where you were because you wore your body down so quickly and you're gonna have to recover, overtraining, things like that, which I'm, overtraining is real. It doesn't really happen often for most people, but it's real. So, you know. And that kind of leads perfectly into what I want to talk about next. So. You're doing all this exercise. You're doing all these different forms, swimming, running, um, weight training, all this stuff at the same time. How do you yeah. recover properly? Like what is, what are your best tips for someone to recover that's doing all this to their body? Um, a big one is make sure you cool down properly from your workout. Like don't, don't go for a, a five mile run and then go sit on your couch directly after do your five mile run and then maybe walk for a mile after or walk for a half a mile. Um, maybe stretch, you know, stretching is, there's a lot of literature out there saying stretching doesn't help and it does help and that it makes things worse or makes things better. Um, if you feel better doing it, do it. If you don't like doing it and you do, you found something else that you like, do it. Um, foam roll is very good uh i think that's important foam roll before and after even uh other things that i do is i do hot cold contrast that shit works wonders What's um, that? What's i mentioned that? it before. hot cold contrast so like i'll go in the shower and i'll have i sh like showering hot but i also like showering cold so i'll do a minute after i clean myself and actually shower um i'll do about 10 to 15 you know i might say 15 that's the odd number 10 to 16 minutes of rounds i'll do a minute hot a minute freezing cold and go back and forth and what that does the contrast when you heat everything up getting everything nice and loose right you feel good with nice hot water feels good on the, on the sore muscles uh you get a lot of blood flow you know, dilate the blood vessels and then when you do that really cold water what's the first thing that happens when you jump in cold water take a deep breath and you tighten up right everything gets tense you close up your blood vessels um cold water on your skin and your muscles combats inflammation a, a few other mitochondrial things in your body important for repair but when you close those blood vessels the blood take it can't travel as fast and 
can't not as much of it can travel so what happens that nutrient rich blood that you just had shooting in there from the dilated blood vessels from the hot water is now stuck in that muscle feeding it you know like in simple terms feeding it and you go back after the minute or so to the hot water get new blood pumped in there pump the old blood out right and then you restrict it again and don't let it leave you're sending nutrient rich oxygenated blood to your muscle keeping it there pretty much till it doesn't have the nutrients it needs and you're pulling it out and sending it back in it's extremely good to fight soreness uh doms if you have bad doms you can do that um it's extremely good for recovery i've seen it i've had a like a lot of really sore muscles to the point where like i don't even you know like oh my glutes hurt so much i can't walk i do 10 15 minutes or something like the hot cold cold hot cold contrast and i'm like a new person you know oh. so yeah that's kind of it's similar how cryo works in a way a little different yeah. though because it's more direct contact direct contact usually always better than something that's not direct you know um yeah, um, that really works. Um, icing things can be good if it's bad. Not too long, though, because you don't want to damage the skin. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you can do a hot-cold contrast. You can do, if you've ever been to a chiropractor, a lot of times they do moist heat before they do, like, some type of manual work. They get the moist heat on there. They loosen you up and things like that. You can do moist heat mixed with ice, you know, switch that back and forth. Um I have a muscle stimulator. I love it. That helps a lot. It gives you the whole point of muscle stimulator is to first it gives you a you know a neurological connection to the muscle, which is good. So it teach you you how to recruit more fibers, which can be really good for training. But it also uh, gives mini contractions and increases blood flow to blood flow to the area. Uh, those mini contractions you do. Like I said, when you do high repetition, it's a recovery work, right? Well, when you're sitting there with the muscle stem on there and it gives you a thousand contractions without you doing anything, that's a lot of recovery work you're doing in simple terms without even putting in the work, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, things like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, manual therapy, if you have the means for it, if you, you know, some people don't have the money for that and that's completely understandable, so you know, yoga. I never really got into it, but I've done it a few times. Uh, You've done it before. It's fucking my, color. <laughs> my cousin, my cousins are yogis. I believe that's what they say. So, uh, like, I, they sent me a few videos on like routines for beginners, and every now and then I do it. You know, and uh, definitely feels good. So that, a lot of the times, it's a workout on its own. Yoga. That's a tough one. What's that? You broke up a little bit. Oh, I was just saying, I was saying a lot of times yoga itself can also be its own workout. Like, yo, I remember, oh, yeah. I've, never, I've never sweated more in my life besides wrestling practice, hot yoga. Hot, hot yoga. yoga. I was sweating bullets. Never done anything so yeah. hard, but I felt so good afterwards. I felt so loose. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was crazy. Um, how about, so this will probably be the last question. Uh, since we're kind of still on the topic of recovery, um, what supplements would you recommend for recovery and what supplements are, have you currently been taking? Okay. So this is somewhat a specialty because I work in a supplement store. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of research on supplements. Um, the biggest, the most important supplements I'd have to say are your fish oils and krill oils. Very good for you. Everybody should be taking them. Fish oil or krill oil. It doesn't really matter. I, I take krill oil for the most part. Um, just because I found a few studies where it can promote mTOR signaling, which is signals protein synthesis. So like, that's just a little far fetched. Don't even worry about that. Mm -hmm. But, um, vitamin D3, extremely beneficial. You need it. Most of us are deficient, especially a little darker skin people. Mm -hmm. Um, cause they absorb less of it. I'm fairer skin. So I probably get a good amount, but take it anyway um zinc magnesium very important um take it every night when i go to sleep it's very good for things ranging from sleep to testosterone to 
you name it. it it's a lot of mechanisms it works through. Um, and not the traditional supplement, but your electrolytes, ions in your body, uh, you know, salt, potassium, same with magnesium and zinc, things like that. Uh, you need those. If you were to go, let's get to like an actual like supplement now, not like vitamins. Or like the stereotypical I, supplements, you know what I'm saying? Like protein. Yeah. 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 Um, protein powder is not necessary. If you're meeting your protein needs, don't waste your money on a protein powder. You should try to get it from Whole Food anyway. Protein powder, people usually associate it with bulking because they can get more calories, but it's the opposite. There's other ways to get more calories without the protein. You need more protein when you cut because you want to try to stay anabolic as much as possible and not catabolic. And people um, mix up mass gainer shakes and so. protein shakes, and it really irks me sometimes because they are two different things. A lot of mass gainers this is the issue, and I don't recommend them. The one mass gainer I recommend is Mass Chaser by Project AD. It is way more carb oriented than uh, protein. It doesn't have as much protein as a typical mass gainer, which is good, I think. I think it's stupid that they take in all this, you know. People don't even eat enough anyway for a fucking mass gainer. They don't fucking need that. Why don't you just Unless eat you're training whatever. Like very intensely. I don't really think most people don't need a mass gainer shake. No, no. It's just they're, they're most, most people really don't eat enough, and they think they do. Me and Nasser have a few friends that would be like, we eat so much, and we'd be out eating with them. And it, we'd learn very quick how little they do eat, and they'd learn very quick how much you actually need to eat. Mm -hmm. um so you know we won't say any names <laughs> but uh yeah so i'm a huge fan of intra workout supplementation i think bcaa's are extremely beneficial depending this matters depending on when your prior protein source meal was if you ate a protein rich meal an hour before training, there's no need for amino acids because they're already flowing in your bloodstream. But when you've gone through a certain amount of time of a fasted state from protein, let's say three hours, the amount of protein circulating in your bloodstream is m mostly lower. So you wanna add in the basic amino acids from a protein like leucine, uh, L, like isoleucine and l valine the, the main one is typically BCAAs. You can add an EAA too, which is pretty much almost a complete protein almost. Um, you know, that can be really beneficial for recovery, uh, staying anabolic, things like that, uh, multiple other things that are just too deep to dive into. Um, something I'm also a huge fan of is uh, stim-free pump products. Um, I think or pump products. there's so many, right? There, right. Yeah. They're two different things. Yeah. yeah. No, no stim. Like okay. I, I yeah. like a pump product, like no stimulants, nothing like that. Um, everybody always is concerned about, oh, I don't want to get bloated, this and that. Yeah, bloating's not the best thing, but water retention is, and everybody associates water retention with being bloated, and it's kind of bad, and it gives pump products a bad name. Um the best thing you can do for your body when you're lifting weights or training is to have more water in the muscle to in the joint. It gives the joint better leverage. It keeps it healthier. It keeps it from getting injured. You have a dehydrated muscle and you're lifting weights. That's where you tear something. So a big thing with pump products is the water retention. Um, another thing, a big thing with the pump product is the vasodilation the opening of the blood vessel is the amount of blood that it pushes into the muscle. Um, it's extremely beneficial. It sends a lot of nutrients to the muscle. And it allows for a bigger pump, which has a few different processes that can happen with a big pump metabolically and things like that besides growth. Um, it's overall way better than a traditional pre-workout that is geared towards just giving you a stimulant high. Um, 
I'm not going to dive too deep into the aspects of what it does because that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about what I like to use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would say if you're doing a traditional supplements, I would look into a pump-based product and an amino acid product and the vitamins and minerals and electrolytes I mentioned mm -hmm. prior to those. Mm -hmm. That's really all you need, you know. You, that's, that's, you know, and the aminos are like optional depending on your meal again. So I'd say the one that you truly do need and would really benefit you is the pump product. Mm -hmm. And I actually read everybody. Just, mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. That's it. No, no, everybody. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I recently what? and I recently was just uh, using a pump product for the first time. Like I bought it and I was like, wow, like this shit really does make a difference. Cause I was at home. So I didn't have like, I, could, I literally couldn't go as intense as I did at the gym because it's just not possible. I didn't have, I didn't have the weights. Yeah. So I, I was like, you know, I don't really want to, you know, get a pre-workout with all this caffeine. It's going to make me feel jittery and all this stuff for if I'm not even going for like a huge PR or something like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I got the pump product. It was actually great. And uh, I actually even yeah. just have, like ab workouts. I got great pumps from it. I used the BPM one. I told you about it, but there's a bunch of different yeah, yeah, yeah. that have pump products that are good pump products. What are some, what are some trusted yeah. brands that you would, give to the people and then um and then we'll probably just end it off there um i'm a huge fan of project ad um this guy joe binley i believe he's from the uk uh a fantastic line of products best pump product i've ever had uh best gda in the market a glucose disposal agent um that's for another time that's an extremely beneficial product mm -hmm. best amino acid i've ever used best intra-workout carbohydrate supplement i've ever used um, I have not tried their mass gainer, but I mentioned it before. Mass chaser, mm -hmm. the cl probably the cleanest and lowest calorie mass gainer you'll ever see. It's only like 500 calories a scoop, and everything's always like a thousand. So it's very confusing to think it's a mass gainer, but it's very clean product made well, very digestible, things like that. Overall, it, it's an amazing company. Um, a Nova Farm has Nova Pump and Nova Pump Neuro really good products um i think it has eight grams of citrulline five grams of glycerol powder or four which is really good it got super spinach which is red spinach they say it's 200 times i believe more uh rich than beetroot and nitrogen which is like that's extreme um that's a the super spinach is an amazing product the blood the, the pump's unbelievable um all max impact pump great product got some nootropics in there so it you know stimulates the mind a little bit it's not a, it's not stimulants like it's like lion's mane uh you know cordyceps things like that um and there's a few other ones you know uh but those are the ones i do recommend fully i got you i got you. that i back up i use them personally mm -hmm. All right, and Alex, I think that's – I think we're going to cap it off there. Honestly, that was some great conversation that we were having about, um, like, mixing in the cardio and stuff like that. Yeah. I really like at the end how we were talking about the supplements because uh, – actually, I've just been getting a lot of questions recently. I'm like, yo, should I get should I get this protein? Should I, you know, get this brand? Uh, you know, and stuff like that. So I'm glad that we mentioned that, and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned, like, the cleaner yeah. supplements and the ones that you've actually used before. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I – I, I mean, I, can, I can't – I can't tell anybody you should do this or that just because I, I – I, I used almost every product in my store at one point that I work at. Mm -hmm. Um, even if I just tried it one day, just so I can at least give a feedback on it and like my experience with it. Um, I'm very, I'm very aware of what happens with my body, especially when I work out. So I can see what pretty much every supplement does to me. So, um, I can give good feedback, you know, I'm very aware of it. So I got you. I got you. All right, Alex, I just want to thank you for coming on here. Best of luck in the Navy. Shipping out next week. Um, thanks, bro. He's going to fucking kill him, man. I know he is. So, um, yeah, and thanks, thanks guys, yeah, for uh, tuning it. in today. And, uh, yeah, and then we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Awesome. Yep.